Hello, and welcome to a conversation with artist Aidan Dillon, who is participating in the Art Under Glass initiative this October in downtown Evanston, where he has um, where he is showing some of his contemporary art underneath the windows of vacant stores. So, hello, Aiden. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, all right. So, just to be clear, you are part of our emerging artist membership in Evanston, Made, in that you're still very young. You're a college student. You're um, early on in your painting practice. Um, and your work for this stage of your life is pretty spectacular. So A, congratulations. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Um, and B, first tell us a little bit about where you're getting inspiration from. Before we talk about your work, um, talk to us about who you are looking at in the art world to make the work that you do. Yeah, sure. So um, I think I have a lot of different mediums and backgrounds of people who inspire me. Um, obviously, there are a lot of older contemporary modern artists like uh, Willem de Kooning and Basqua and Ellen Frankenthaler. Um, so I really like some of that older stuff. Um, but I try and, and incorporate different ideas from newer artists like Tom Sachs, Iowa Y. Um, and you know those are all very different artists tom Sachs is more of like a sculpture contemporary artist but i really like his process and i really like kind of his mindset behind what he does um and then even like inspiration from schoolwork and what i study um so like mies van der rohe who you know is an architect but he's still like a designer um and I do a lot of studying as an urban studies major. I do a lot of studying on just cities and people. So, you know, when I'm walking around in a city like Minneapolis, there's a lot of inspiration that I get. Um, so yeah, kind of a wide range of people and things that inspire me, so. So we are showing two pieces in particular of your work, both paintings. One appears to be maybe on a cardboard piece that's been affixed to a sturdier backdrop. And both are very multidimensional, very multidisciplinary. Talk a little bit about the work that people will see. Yeah, sure. So both of those works actually came right from the beginning of quarantine in like March or April. Uh, so I was home from spring break or for spring break from University of Minnesota. And I never went back because that's when COVID kind of started in mid-March. So I just had the opportunity to start painting again. And typically most of my work up until then that I was doing in high school, senior year of high school, like a little bit after freshman year of college, sophomore year of college, um, was only acrylic and charcoal or pastels. And I was doing that again when I got back home just a few months ago or six months ago. Um, but I was like a little frustrated with the work. So I started incorporating collage, cutting up newspapers, um cutting up like instruction manuals to stuff like an epson printer or something mm -hmm. <laughs> and using uh shipping labels from like packages amazon packages because you know at the time uh we were all like ordering stuff online we weren't really going to stores and buying stuff so it looks like you were collecting sort of the ephemera in your world it looks like you were sort of looking up and noticing objects around you and then incorporating it into your work right yeah, that's exactly, I think, what I was doing. And um, I like to, like, with my process, um, create challenges for myself. So maybe do something that I know, like, I'll just do one thing for, like, an hour. And then I'll see, okay, this isn't exactly what I want, but it's now, like, a challenge of how do I make what I have here into something cohesive. Mm -hmm. And so that's where, like, bringing in things that, you know, or maybe just laying around my room or, you know, coming in the mail, I can use that. Okay, like, let's see, how can I um, use this to create a different image, a composition, so. Nice, and you're also a bit playful. Um, 
self-critical in that some of the objects you've used, like literally it says, this is a charcoal pencil. <laughs> is that a nod right. to somebody or is that you just having fun? Um, I think at the time that, I think that was a nod to Tom Sachs because when I was working on that piece, um, Tom Sachs was doing basically like free Instagram live streams of him just talking about his work. And that's very, very valuable information. I mean, I think he's one of the biggest contemporary artists today. And he was just openly, you know, every week he'd go on a live stream and talk about his work and talk about what he was doing. Um, and so at the time I was really affixed to his idea that his work is not pristine or clean. You know, it's like when you look at an iPhone, this is what he does. He goes, when you look at an iPhone, uh, you'd never be able to tell like a human put this together. This is not like, you know, this is very, very like robotic and too perfect. Um, and his work really revolves around respecting the mistakes and stuff. So, you know, I wanted to make it clear, like I'm using a charcoal pencil here and, you know, I'm doing this. There are plenty of mistakes in the painting that I've done. Um, throughout the process and I just let it happen and work with it so excellent and the titles to both of the pieces can you share them with us <laughs> yeah so um the big one cannabis the movie was from I don't even know when the newspaper actually no I do the newspaper was from January and that was right when um marijuana was legalized and so all of like the newspaper articles were around that and the way I cut it out I don't think the headline was cannabis the movie but the way I cut it out that's what it said and so I thought that was like just a funny title for it um it's not necessarily centered like the piece isn't about that but it's just like what I incorporate into it um and then crow I think I just named it crow because the shape the main shape that's like cut out of the negative space looks like a crow. I wasn't necessarily even trying to make a crow. That's just like what I saw from it. So my, my titles aren't really all that serious. I know I named a piece that was actually in one of your shows last October. I named it Lasco because I had done it on a piece of cardboard that came from a Lasco box fan. Right. So, so let's just talk about that for a second. Um, a lot of your work is on cardboard, not all repurposed material, but you, mm -hmm. you know, a bit of found object. Um, are you going to maintain that medium? Are you going to move away and go into canvas? Why were you painting on cardboard? What was happening there? Um, I have moved into canvas more. Um, I have like five canvases now that I'm working on currently, but I think at the time and like most of my work before now, I was really just like finding stuff to paint on. I'd go in my garage and find a piece of MDF board or um, two pieces that will be in the show and including cannabis, the movie um, were from like a TV box. And I just thought, oh, that's like huge. And that's awesome. And I could paint on that. And I don't really, like think about, you know, the quality of it, but I, I do actually really enjoy working on cardboard because of like, it feels good. It, I like the way paint goes on the cardboard. And I think I feel a little more confident, a little more adventurous when I'm on cardboard because it's, you know, I, I literally grabbed cardboard from the alley down the street where I live and was using that for a lot of pieces I did this summer. Um, and yeah, I think also too, like, some of my work is on U-Haul boxes. Um, and so like I kind of incorporate what's already on the cardboard um, and try to make that like part of the piece, so. I like it, it's super fun. Um, just a quick Zoom background question. Are you covering something <laughs> on your wall that's offensive? No, it's not offensive. It's oh. uh, a secret project that I awesome. just, yeah. So I don't, it's, yeah. It's nothing offensive or anything. It's just I'm covering up stuff I'm working on right cool. there. So, Excellent. Yeah. The next time we interview you, you will have that uncovered and willing to share. Um, <laughs> your uh, next, your upcoming body of work is going to be part of the maker's market. You're going to be in town selling paintings. Um, does your work always have such scale? Do you ever work small? Yeah. 
Yeah, I do. Um, I did a lot of small work. Hold on, I have it actually right on me. I did a lot of small work um, in the spring and summer uh, just because I was not, I was frustrated with what I was doing on a larger scale. And so I just went to a smaller scale and um, starting doing all of these like little, I don't know if you can, yep. little collages in my journal. Um, and it was more just practice, uh, like practice with composition and again, using like random things like, I mean, this is all from Ikea uh, instruction manuals. Nice. Um, and just pulling out shapes and lines from it. But I really got into that um, sort of scale for a while and was mainly doing work in this size. Um, but I'm back to kind of doing bigger stuff. So. Yeah, I like that you're dumpster diving for materials. I like that you're not afraid of a refrigerator box. I think that's brave and fun. And yeah, the work that you have on display in the windows is a very, um, it's super welcoming and playful and really engaging. And I've been watching people walk by a lot of the storefronts sort of spying on them like on a fake call. Hmm. And there's lots of engagement with your work. So congratulations that's and cool. thank you for joining us. That's super fun. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It was great. All right. Aiden, Dylan, have an awesome day. Thank you.